All right, I think that worked, right? Cool. Uh, welcome, everyone. We'll get started in a few minutes. It's good to see everyone here. By the way, I, uh, Anthony, I noticed that you added a little uh, bright mind icon as an emoji. Oh, yeah, we have... Uh, also my face. It's yeah. hilarious. Can there you, you go. The, uh, hold on, let me see if we have... Can we do the stickers? Oh, my me? God. <laughs> Nathan <laughs> found my picture on the internet. That's fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. That's like me on Halloween in 2022 or something. Um, I guess it was 2021. I don't know, but I was a unicorn and I had a very, very good time that night. <laughs> the actually, so that night we went to see my friend Ben DJ and, uh, just at like a local bar and he's so fun and he's actually going to be DJing our wedding. I'm getting married in March. So we hired him to be the wedding DJ. Congrats. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love how this community uh creates emojis it's so funny you have some good ones like shinzen ones and, yeah um i feel like that's maybe something that's unique about discord i mean you can do it i think with slack too but i think discord makes it a little easier to like hack together your own yeah. experience that's so funny <laughs> oh my god that's good um so yeah, I don't know. Do we want to jump in, Anthony? I don't know if you want to do any kind of introduction, or should I just kind of jump into the workshop? Well, actually, I think that this is probably, um, even though everybody has seen my text all over the place, I think this is probably the first time seeing my face for a lot of people. So I am Anthony. Um, I am one of your moderators on the community. Uh, so I asked Toby if he could do this event with us, and he said yes. And um I uh, I am very happy and also very nervous. This is my first event, so um, I am looking forward to it very much. So, Toby, if you want to take it away, please. You're doing great, Anthony, so far. This is a great event. Happy to be here. Um, my name's Toby. Um, really cool to jump in on y'all's community, uh, the Meditation Mind Discord. Um, Anthony and I met through my meditation app, Brightmind. Um, well, one of the things I do is I like set aside time to talk with uh, users, Brightminders from all over. So um, it was really cool to meet Anthony and um, we talked about doing a workshop together and here we are. So this will be an hour workshop and we're going to explore decision making. And the reason, um, well, y'all voted on it. So really, y'all chose it. But one of the reasons why I proposed it as a topic is um, meditation can also can often be viewed as kind of like weird or how does this relate to my life? If I'm upset, shouldn't I like go do something or um, talk to someone or make some decision or improve my life objectively? And what I want to make clear with this workshop is that meditation can be very practical and it can very much impact your day-to-day -day life quickly and directly. And it's not something that you have to like practice for 10 years and then you finally kind of see how it impacts your life. This is a like super practical down to earth thing that you can do to help you make decisions, right? We all have, usually, we usually have, you know, small certainly tons of small decisions usually we have some medium decisions and pretty often we have large decisions too like should i buy this house should i date this person should i 
accept this job. These are big decisions too. So anywho, we'll explore a meditation today that clearly links the meditation practice with your life and your practical life. And I think with that, I'll just jump into the guidance. Um, and then afterwards, we can do Q&A. So yeah. hold your questions till the end. end. You're going to what? I'm going to hop off the stage and let you Okay, have... cool. Thanks, Anthony. Um, so we'll do probably a 20, 25 minute guidance. Um, if that sounds long for you, don't worry. It, it actually won't be that long. I will offer lots of tips and tricks along the way, so it will fly by. Um, and then we'll jump into Q&A. So I'll ring a bell at the beginning and the end. Um, here's the beginning bell. Relax the legs. Lengthen the spine. Relax the shoulders and arms. Lengthen the neck. Tuck in your chin a little. And relax your face. Now, think of a decision that's on your mind. Could be a big, medium, or small decision. There's value in using this practice for all sorts of decisions. Could be a simple one, like whether to buy peanut butter, or a medium one, like if you should buy a shirt, or a big one, like if you should rent an apartment or buy a house or date this person or do this job or go to grad school or big stuff like that. I would suggest picking something that you care about. Um, so any whatever decision that's on your mind that you care about, pick that one, whether it's small, medium, or large. Just take a moment to decide what you're going to explore. And once you have your decision, Let's take a moment to create two phrases that represent the core of the decision. So create an I will and an I will not statements. For example, I will buy peanut butter and I will not buy peanut butter or I will go to grad school, I will not go to grad school. You might have to simplify the decision in order to create like an I will and I will not, that's fine. Um, like if your decision has a ton of different angles, just pick one of the angles, one of the potential possibilities. So create your I will and your I will not statements.
Now repeat the I will statement a few times to yourself in your mind. So don't say it out loud. Say it to yourself in your mind and do it at a gentle pace, calm tone. It might sound like this. I will buy peanut butter. I will buy peanut butter. I will buy peanut butter. Just repeat your I will statement a few times. Now, uh, continuing to use mental talk, so this internal monologue, kind of talking to yourself, you could say, list out the reasons why the I will statement is the way to go. So you might say, I think it's on sale. I love peanut butter. People I live with love peanut butter, etc. Um, often these are logical reasons, so we're engaging our rational minds. So list out the reasons why the I will statement is the way to go. If you run out of reasons, feel free to repeat reasons you've already mentioned. The point here is to spend time with the rational mind, to spend time with the reasons why the I will statement is the way to go. Really let those reasons sink in. So list reasons. If you run out of reasons, repeat them. Good. I'll let that go. If you didn't finish listing off all the reasons, that's okay. Um, 
You can always come back to this exercise later, but we're going to move on for now. Now switch to the I will not side of things. Repeat your I will not phrase to yourself in your mind a few times. Now, similarly, begin listing the reasons why the I will not statement is the way to go. Uh, if you run out of reasons, just repeat ones that you've already said. Good. Let that go. Now we're going to use our imagination, an entirely different part of the mind. One of the things that makes humans unique is we have the ability to imagine possible futures. Um, we can see things with our mind's eye. We can perceive mental pictures, mental movies. We can imagine situations. So, starting back with the I will statement, consider, really see with your mind's eye, different situations that you'll find yourself in if you go with the I will statement. What scenes may occur? It can be static pictures or little movie clips. Um, the point of this part of the exercise is to spend time with your imagination, with the mental pictures associated with predicting what our lives might look like if we go with the I will side of things. So explore, imagine what might happen 
the scenes you might encounter. Of course, there might be many paths. Um, you might not know exactly what's going to happen, and that's fine. Take time to explore all of them. This can be playful. Um, just imagine stuff that might happen and spend time with those mental images. Good. Uh, let that go. Next, we'll explore the I will not side of things using our imagination. So imagine the scenes you might encounter if you go with the I will not side of things and spend time with them. If you run out of ideas, that's fine. Just stay with. Um, one of the scenes or a few of the scenes. Again, you can repeat stuff. Imagine I will not.
Good. Let that go. The last part of our exploration will explore the emotional body. So let your awareness drop down into your body. Sometimes we experience emotion in the body like joy, anticipation, interest, anger, fear, all sorts of emotions in the body. The emotional body is very rich in information. So, starting with the I will statement, to see if your body has anything to say about that. It could be emotions like excitement, fear. It could also be intuitions, like, eh, I don't want to do that. Or that feels right. Just be open to whatever. Um, if you don't feel much, that's fine too. Just remain focused on the body and just kind of listen. Listen for any type of emotion or intuition that comes up. So once again, take the I will side of things, that option, and drop it down into your body. Notice if anything comes up. Good. Now take the I will not side of things and drop that down into the body. Notice if there are any emotions, intuitions that arise. If you don't notice much, uh, that's fine. Just keep your awareness in the body, monitoring the body, and just listen. Stay open for anything that does come up.
<clears throat> Good work. Uh, take a moment to notice where you're at. You'll probably fit into one of the four following categories. You might know what you want to do. You might not know what you want to do. Or you might realize that you really should be making a, a different decision entirely first. You also may realize that you need more information before you can move forward. So take a moment to put yourself in one of those camps. You know what to do. You don't know what to do. You need to be making another decision. You need more information. Where do you fall? And regardless of where you're at, um, now is time to feel good. Making decisions, being a human, living life, this is uh, hard stuff. It's usually pretty confusing for most people. So we just spent a while being really intentional, really clear, really thoughtful about this decision. And we should feel proud of that. So for the next few minutes, try to cultivate and bask in a sense of pride and content, joy. The minimum is to just repeat a word like I'm doing, or a phrase like I'm doing great, or a word like joy, any positive word or phrase that resonates with you. The minimum is to just repeat that in your mind. If you'd like to add on top of that, try to feel whatever you're saying to yourself in the body. So if you're saying the word joy, try to also feel it in the body, cultivate joy in the body. Spend a few minutes intentionally creating and focusing on goodness.
Um, good work, folks. Um, so next up, we'll do a Q and A. Um, so any questions you have about the practice or reports, um, what that was like for you are welcome. I'll try to clarify things for folks. Um, I would imagine um, what we want, I mean, Anthony, feel free to jump in, but I was going to say just like drop questions in the chat and yeah, or so raise your that. raise your hand too. Um, and yeah, we can yeah, bring you up to the stage. I think it's fine. Um, so, uh, just raise your hand and then, um, and then, uh, you can also drop them in the chat and I'll, I'll read them out or Toby, you can read them. It's fine. Um, I do know that I'm going to get peanut butter right after this. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, chunky or smooth. Definitely creamy. Yeah. This, the smooth stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see that. I'm a chunky guy myself, but you do you. Um. So, okay. Yeah, I've been anyone... able to I've been able to hand raise. So, if anybody wants to request to speak, feel free. Um, or drop it in the chat if not. <clears throat> and Anthony, are there any? There's a few messages that happened during the guidance. Were there any questions from that? Uh, it doesn't look like it. It's kind of like more. Uh, logistical stuff. Of people not knowing where they were i guess okay cool so chime says i joined 20 minutes in what was the i will question to ask oneself when scanning the emotional body um i mean i would say probably just listen to the recording from the beginning um you'll understand what i meant but the basic idea is where we're doing a decision-making meditation between an I will and an I will not, you know, you fill in the blank. And we were mining the emotional body for any helpful information about the decision. But again, just re-listen to the, the recording and that'll make a lot more sense. Cherry asks, does meditation make you sleepy? Um, or is it just me? Good question. Uh, it, it often does for a lot of folks. I struggle with this a lot. Um, and it's not necessarily a... So you can think about meditation as you're trying to get really relaxed, but also be alert at the same time. Alert and clear, but also relaxed. And so if you're getting sleepy, you're actually... You're excelling at, at one of the things you're trying to do in meditation. You're excelling at the relaxation part. So that's good. You're, you're doing it. Um, and so what we need to do, though, is turn up the clarity knob a little bit. Turn up the alertness knob a little bit. And there are just a few practical things that I would recommend in order to do that. First and foremost, experiment with different times of day. Different folks are more alert at different times in the day. Uh, for me, meditating in the morning is pretty hard. I get really sleepy, but meditating in the evenings is a lot easier. I'm a lot more alert then. So well, that's one thing to experiment with. Another thing is to open your eyes. Um, this can be super helpful. So anytime you're doing any meditation, Keep in mind that if you get sleepy, you can always open your eyes. And uh, you can keep them open for the rest of the session. Um, as you could imagine, light hitting your eyes just kind of wakes you up physiologically. If that doesn't work, you can stand. Um, you can practice any meditation technique standing. Um, and I have to do this every morning. You know, I'm a very experienced meditator. I've been doing this for more than two decades. And every morning I get so sleepy that I have to stand up. So, yeah, this isn't something that like beginners only have to do. Just like this is just part of kind of learning about your mind. And um, I would say liberally use opening your eyes and standing up in order to remain alert. And again, remember that you're 
you're excelling at like half of what we're doing, which is relaxing, but we just got to increase the alertness a little bit. And to be clear, you're increasing the alertness while maintaining the relaxation. Um, it's kind of a, it's like some Jedi stuff. <laughs> As Anthony knows, and probably many of you know, I like the Star Wars references. Um, so hopefully that was helpful, Cherry. Um, moving on. Can we get a little text roadmap of the whole practice? Um, that's a good question. Um, so, I mean, one thing is, as I mentioned at the beginning, I uh, run a meditation app called BrightMind. And one of the things that you get when you finish meditations in BrightMind is a text reference for everything you just did, a review of the basic instructions in textual form. And guess what? The first meditation in Bright Mind is what we just did. It's the decision-making practice. I really like starting with this. So um, one answer is just download Bright Mind and then finish that first meditation and you'll have a textual reference for what we just did. You could also, you know, plug the recording that we're going to publish of this into a transcriber, but that would kind of be a little messy. Um, oh yeah, someone says they're, they forgot that there would be a recording. So, um, Uni mentions the timing. Uh, it, it is probably, that was probably longer than many of you are used to meditating. It was about a 30 minute meditation. Um, the... And that's just because there's a lot of parts, and I wanted to give everyone time to go through all the different stages. But you can do it a lot shorter. Um, it's really up to you. It's like an accordion. You can do what we just did in just a few minutes. Um, if you really only have a few minutes to, to practice, it probably makes sense to do a simpler practice that doesn't have so many parts. Like the one we just did was like three times two is six, seven... Like seven or eight parts, different sections. So that's a lot to add, to cram into. Like you know, if you only have five or ten minutes. But um, um, yeah, I mean, my basic, my general suggestion is uh, at least ten minutes most days. It's kind of a minimum meditation practice. You don't have to hit every day. Uh, it's fine if you miss a few days. We all have lives. But that's my general suggestion in terms of timing. And it's very common for people to work their way up to 20 or 30 minutes a day. Um, it's totally possible. It might seem intimidating, but especially with like guidance, like what I just did, it's not that bad. So um, I encourage folks to do that. Um, Anthony, is there anything you want to add or should I just keep going with the questions? You can keep going. Um, I can read some of these if you're having trouble following them. It's, no, it's I'm I'm good with that. Um, okay. So, okay, cool. Yeah. So the next person says, I was wondering what you think about adding in other people when thinking about the I will or I will not contemplations. So, for example, when you think about buying a new house together with someone, do you think it would be helpful to think about the emotions, thoughts, etc. of the other person? Or would that distract you from your own thoughts and feelings? Um, that's a great question. I would say that, um, <clears throat> prioritize your own thoughts and feelings, uh, in terms of the order of things. So do your own, explore your own thoughts and feelings first. And then absolutely spend time considering what other people might think. Um, because we all live in the context of relationships. And so, um, you know, the, the point of the exercise isn't to limit ourselves to our own thoughts and feelings. Really, the purpose of the exercise is for us to consider all of the factors that are relevant for the decision. And so, if you're buying a house with someone, it's probably pretty relevant what your spouse thinks. So, absolutely explore that stuff. Now, obviously, you should ask them and you know this is assuming that you know what they think and feel um one of the things that could come out of a practice like this is like i wonder what they think of 
of this aspect, this factor, and you could maybe ask them what they think and do the, the, do the practice all over again. Uh, so yes, absolutely explore any factors related to the meditations, whether that's your thoughts and feelings, other people's thoughts and feelings, any of that. It's all good. It's all good data to kind of put into the decision-making mill. Hopefully that's helpful. Jeffrey, feel free to respond in the chat or raise your hand if you want to talk more. Um, so Manu says, I have a high breathing rate and heart rate. I am new to meditation. Can meditation help me to lower my breathing rate and heart rate? I have no heart condition, by the way. And your thoughts on um, Butek? Puteco breathing, if you know about it. I don't know about that style of breathing. Although I would say that there are all sorts of styles of breathing. Um, they're, all, they're often good. They are all like interesting. I, I, I have taught a lot and practiced a lot of like extended out-breath breathing. So um, there's no requirement to change the way you breathe in order to meditate, but... Uh, it's a theme that you'll encounter a lot in meditations. And um, I mean, my, my teaching philosophy is um, expose folks to a variety of practices and empower them to practice what they like. So I would encourage you to just explore stuff and learn different breathing techniques. If you're interested in that, you don't have to. Um, and oh yeah, but a lot of it can be really helpful. Like I said, I, I do an extended out-breath practice like every day, and I was doing it during the, the, the practice we were just doing together. I was extending my out-breath. But yeah, I'm not familiar with that specific one. Um, and in terms of breathing and heart rate, um, <clears throat> uh, it's not like, there's some kind of super simple direct relationship between meditation and breathing and heart rate. Like anytime you meditate, you're going to lower your breathing and heart rate. Some meditations might like, uh, make your heart rate go up. Um, for example, in the decision-making meditation that we were just doing, you know, we were engaging in content that might be uncomfortable for you. You might be considering situations in the future that might happen that might, make you stressed out. So it's possible that your heart rate could have increased during that meditation. So I would say that there isn't some kind of, I mean, the other thing I would say, perhaps more importantly, is meditation is like the word sport. Um, what I mean by that is sports are similar and that in general, they involve like strengthening muscles and skill. But there are a lot of different sports with completely different rules. Like basketball is nothing like American football, which is nothing like uh, bobsledding. So some sports have balls, some sports there's no balls, some sports have boundaries, some sports don't have boundaries. There's so many different <clears throat> types of sports. And it's like, yeah, so meditation is the same way. Meditation is the thing. There are like, thousands of different practices that uh, they all have different instructions um so uh some meditation techniques for you might cause your breathing rate and heart rate to lower but some others might not um there's just it just depends on what you're doing um but i would say that in general uh most for most folks if they practice meditation this is just a super broad brush statement. Their heart rate probably does lower and their, their breathing does lower because, as I was saying earlier, part of what we're doing with meditation is learning how to relax. Uh, it's not all of what we're doing. We're also learning how to stay alert and clear, but um, it's all 50% of what we're doing is, is learning how to relax. And in general, as you relax physiologically, what that means is a slower heart rate and a slower breathing rate. So... Um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, <clears throat> yeah, someone says that they still get sleepy even with eight hours of restful sleep and a cup of coffee. I can relate. <laughs> um, I think 
<clears throat> it's 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 normal for some folks. <clears throat> I would say there's it's not it's not necessarily evidence that you're doing anything wrong. Like I said prior, experiment with different times of day. Um, keep your eyes open, stand up if you need to. Also, if you drink more caffeine than you than you usually drink, then you can it usually helps. So obviously, we develop a tolerance to caffeine, and so. If you drink your normal cup of coffee, that may not keep you awake that well. But if you drink a cup and a half or two cups, um, I've noticed that it's like really fun to drink a ton of caffeine more than I usually do and meditate. It's like really awesome. And so that's an option, by the way. And there's a long history of meditators in Asian monasteries drinking tea. Um, some ancient badass uh, Zen teacher said monks should drink as much tea as possible which is pretty funny. So teas, caffeine's cool. You're not cheating. Um, the other thing I would add is I am currently in the process of consulting with um, sleep medicine doctors. So I do not know that much about this. I'm learning myself, but it's possible. The, the, the doctor thinks that I have some sort of sleeping disorder. And I'm like using a CPAP now and they want to do like more testing. And so um, who the heck knows if, if this is relevant for you. But if you are, if you have the sense that you're more sleepy than most people, my doctor would say that that is abnormal and you should, you should go see a sleep doctor and do some tests. Uh, there's supposedly a ton of undiagnosed sleep disorders in the world. A lot of people aren't breathing properly, which leads to interrupted sleep which leads to chronic tiredness so of course who the heck knows if that's relevant to you you'd have to see an actual doctor to see if that's relevant for you but keep that in mind it's something i'm exploring personally right now um do 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 moving on when i'm on my phone or laptop more when i try to meditate it feels much harder than usual I feel less able to sit still. Do you have any advice? I mean, other than to get off the devices, I'm working on it, lol. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I think what you're pointing to is the fact that what we do leading up to a meditation impacts the mind, impacts the body, and that's going to affect our ability to meditate. So good job being clear on that and noticing that. It's a pretty subtle thing to notice. A lot of people don't notice that. So, um, yeah, good job being being able to perceive that. And certainly spending less time on your devices is going to be the most helpful thing. You can, there's all sorts of, in, in Bright Mind, the app that I mentioned, there's a, I have like podcast style talks in there as well. And there's a talk entitled Chess Against a Supercomputer, which is, I explore this topic of like the relationship between meditation practice and technology and how the the overarching metaphor is that using a smartphone is kind of like playing chess against a supercomputer and that it's you're going to get distracted by it and you won't beat it. Anyways, there's a lot of information in there about like tech healthy habits and how to develop healthy relationships to your technology. Um, but... <clears throat> I guess one quick thing that comes to mind is not all time with devices is created equal. So you can use uh, your phone or your computer and be kind of thoughtless about it. You can also use your phone or computer while maintaining a meditation technique in the background. So for those who have explored Bright Mind, this is what I call Jedi practice. Yet another Star Wars reference. Jedi practice is when you split your attention between a meditation technique and a task at hand. And um, I do this a lot when I'm at work, especially if I'm doing simple tasks. I will maintain a focus on my body and specifically relaxation in my body. And after like hours of responding to bright minders, like I, I coordinate a lot with, with my users. Um, You'd think I'd be pretty burnt out, but I am not. I am 
like super relaxed. I have a smile on my face and I'm like filled with energy and joy. So um, Jedi practice is huge. If you can maintain a technique, uh, any type of technique, but especially a focus on like the breath, slowing the breath, relaxing the body while you're doing this device stuff, you're going to be a lot better off. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. So many messages. I don't know if we'll get to all of these folks, but I'll do my best. Um, uh, I am already pretty set on a decision, but I wanted to check anyways, since I'm kind of reconsidering it lately. Excellent idea. Use, you don't necessarily, yeah, I love that. Um, it's a good thing to mention. You can use this decision-making meditation if you think you already have made up your mind in order to confirm that it's the right thing. And one of the things that made me really excited about this decision-making practice is um, I completely flip-flopped a few times. I thought I was set on a decision, and then I did this, and these were like pretty important decisions. And I did this decision-making meditation, and at the end of it, I was like, oh no, I want to do this other thing. Thank God I took the time to, uh, thank God I took the time to do the whole decision-making meditation. I was about to make a horrible decision. So that only had to had to happen a few times for me to remember to like always do a decision-making de meditation if it was important. So this brings up an interesting kind of like algorithm that you can use. If a decision, if you're confused about a decision or the decision is important, do the decision-making meditation. So it does not have to check both of these boxes. The decision can just be confusing or just be important. Just it being important is enough for you to do the practice. Um, because like I say, sometimes you, you end up with uh, unexpected outcomes. So that's kind of what I do. Even if I think I know what I'm going to do, if something's important, I do, I'm thorough and I do the decision-making meditation anyways. Anyways, that was kind of a tangent. Um, so I took a different thing for the I will phrase and noticed clear resistance. Right after the start, and it knew my initial decision is still very valid, even though I had more reasons to go with the other thing. Yeah, so it sounds like it's a little hard to hear what's going on for you, but I think um, what I hear you saying is that you did notice some other reasons to do the other thing, but you, but you experienced more confidence in what you originally thought, which is great. Um, I mean, even if you don't switch around what you think you're going to do, part of what this practice can do is allow you to move forward into the future with confidence, which feels very different than moving forward into the future with sketchy vibes. So, um, yeah, so if something's important, do the decision-making meditation. Even if you still end up doing what you thought you were going to do, it's still beneficial because you're, you're entering the future with confidence and clarity and calm. And that is going to have all sorts of other positive effects. Um, so we're at the two-hour mark. Um, Sorry, two o'clock mark. Um, I think that we'll pro we'll have to stop here because um, I actually have another meeting that I have to run to. That looks so, like it's pretty much the end of the okay. question anyway. So the rest of them are responses. So okay, I was wondering. Cool. Well, thanks everyone um, for hanging out. This was really fun for me. I love. Um, answering folks questions and hopefully this was helpful for y'all um i think and through the meditation mind community we're offering like a one month free trial so maybe anthony you want to just like drop that link in yes, the chat we'll do that um as i mentioned i i run a meditation app the decision making one you just did that's the first one um so if you're interested um giving everyone a, a free month check it out um and um yeah it'll be fun to do this again sometime 
Um, I'll be on the Discord. I'm not sure how, um, if I'll be able to, res I probably won't really be able to respond to that many questions, but feel free to say hi on the Discord if you, if you see me around. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. Have a good day. Um, yeah, bye-bye, everyone. <clears throat> nice shirt, by the way, Anthony. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pretty cool, like, meditation, like, app that uh, called Bright Mind. <laughs> <laughs> are you wearing the Clarity version? What, why can't, or, yeah, you're yeah, Clarity. Clarity. Nice. That's, that's, might be my favorite, honestly. I kind of like Clarity. That's kind of what I'm working on the most right now, so. Nice.